Okay. When is the last time that this happened in a congressional hearing? Ladies and gentlemen, seeking uh, the truth is the obligation of this committee. I can see no point in going further. I have no expectation that Ms. Lerner will cooperate with this committee, and therefore we stand Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I have a statement. I have a procedural question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have a procedural question. Mr. Chairman, you cannot run a committee like this. You just cannot do this. This is, we're better than that as a country. We're better than that as a committee. I have asked for a few minutes to ask a procedural What you just saw is the chairman of a congressional committee adjourning a hearing without allowing any other member of the committee to speak. When is the last time that happened? No one knows. You have never seen it happen. I've seen hundreds of congressional hearings, and I've never seen it happen. No one working for the out-of-control committee chair who pulled that stunt has seen it happen. We asked Daryl Ice's staff in writing today, when was the last time a committee chairman did not allow another committee member to speak before adjourning a hearing in either the House or the Senate? Daryl Ice's staff had no reply to that question. Daryl Issa did not accept our invitation to appear on this program tonight. Instead, he appeared on Fox News, where he was fawned over and was able to bask in the ignorance of another Fox News anchor. Greta Van Susteren was the lucky one tonight. Greta Van Susteren makes much of the fact that she is a lawyer, but she obviously has no comprehension of the law in the case that Daryl Issa is pursuing, which he calls a scandal and Fox News calls a scandal. And the only way you can call it a scandal is if you have never read the law on 501c4 organizations. The investigation that Daryl Issa says he is pursuing is how the IRS has administered the law and regulations on 501c4 organizations. That's what this is all about. That is the subject of Daryl Issa's investigation. Nothing more, nothing less. And you would think that Congressman Issa would have at some point read aloud the very simple law on 501c4 organizations, you would think that someone at Fox News would have done that, but they haven't and they won't. They never will. I was the first to make the wording of that law public last year, but Fox News and most of the Washington media still, still relentlessly avoid the wording of that law, which is absolutely essential to understanding why absolutely nothing scandalous has happened at the IRS in this story. The hundred-year-old law, as viewers of this program know, says tax-exempt social welfare organizations must be civic leagues or organizations not organized for profit but operated exclusively for the promotion of social welfare. And then in 1959, President Eisenhower's chief counsel at the IRS wrote an interpretation of that law called a regulation that says that 501c4s must be operated primarily, that was his word, primarily for social welfare. If there is a scandal here, it is that President Eisenhower's IRS effectively rewrote the law from exclusively to primarily without any consultation with the Congress, without the legal authority to do that. Congress is responsible for writing those laws, not the IRS. That is genuinely scandalous that that happened. And no one at Fox News knows that that happened in 1959. I have issued today a permanent invitation for Daryl Issa to come on this program to have what I promise will be a civil discussion of his investigation and the law. I will begin that discussion, telling him right now, by doing something apparently none of his staff have done. I will read to him the law on 501c4 organizations. I will then read to him the regulation on 501c4 organizations. I will then ask him 
how IRS workers should interpret those two things, those two words, exclusively in pri or in primarily. Should they enforce the law that says exclusively, or should they enforce the regulation that says primarily? It is impossible to enforce both. I defy Attorney Van Susteren to read to her audience the law on 501c4 organizations and then read to her audience the regulation on 501c4 organizations and then explain to them how she, Attorney Van Susteren, would interpret the law and the regulation if she were working at the IRS. Which would Attorney Van Susteren choose to enforce, the law or the regulation? Because, Greta, you cannot possibly enforce both. IRS workers with jurisdiction over 501c4 organizations, when confronted with the conflict between the law and the regulation, did their best to try to evaluate how much political activity 501c4 applica applicants intended to engage in. They legitimately pursued those inquiries, and they pursued them about Tea Party organizations, Republican organizations, Democratic Party organizations, liberal organizations, because the regulation they were reading compelled them to ask those questions. Not everyone on Daryl Ice's staff can possibly be blindly ignorant to this. Some of them know it. They know what the law says. But it is entirely possible that none of them have the courage to shatter their boss's fantasy about what happened at the IRS. Chairman Issa is so protective of that fantasy that this is what happens now at his fake hearings. What are we hiding? What's the big deal? May I ask my question? May you, I state my statement? You're, you're all free to leave. We've adjourned, but the gentleman may ask his question. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have one procedural question, and it goes to trying to help you get the information by the way that you just asked. What is your question? Let, I'm, I'm going, no, let me say what I have to say. I've listened to you for the last 15 or 20 minutes. Let me say what I have to say. Chairman, I have one procedural Ms. question. Ms. Lerner, you're, you're, you're released. You may. But first, I would like to use my time to make some brief points. For the past year, the central Republican accusation in this investigation. We're adjourned. Close it down. collusion directed by on behalf of the White House. Before our. Thank you. This was a comedy of the president's political enemies effectively and lies about it during the election year. End of quote. He continued this theme on Sunday, but I, if you will sit down and allow me to ask the question, I am a member of the Congress of the United States of America. I am tired of this. Well. We have, we have members over here, each who you represent 700,000 people. You cannot just have a one-sided investigation. There is absolutely something wrong with that, and it is absolutely un-American. Here, here. We had a hearing. It was adjourned. I gave you an opportunity to ask a question. You had no question. I do have a question. I gave you an opportunity. I'm not old enough to remember Joe McCarthy's hearings, so I can tell you I have never seen such shameful conduct by a committee chairman. But after her chat with Daryl Issa tonight, this is what Greta Van Susteren's conclusion was. Shame on President Obama for not doing the right thing all these months, like picking up the phone and directing his attorney general to aggressively and fairly investigate. And shame on Greta and everyone at Fox News who have never bothered to read the law on 501c4 organizations that Daryl Issa claims he is investigating. Joining me now 
Congressman Jerry Conley of Virginia, a member of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee who was in the room today. Congressman Conley, I don't have to ask you if you've ever seen that before. Uh, I checked with the Senate historian today. They knew of no such instance of this ever happening. A chairman running a hearing, adjourning it without allowing any other member to speak of either party. Uh, checked with Norm Orenstein, a congressional scholar we all know. He had no such example. What we have seen from time to time, we, is once in a while people will turn off microphones that kind of thing will happen but uh, as far as a chairman gaveling a, a uh, hearing to a close without allowing anyone else to speak uh, in my experience that's never happened Lawrence I couldn't agree with you more uh, I like you was a staffer on the hill for 10 years I have served as a staffer on one committee and as a member of Congress on three committees I have never seen a chairman abuse power and show the kind of profound disrespect for the ranking member, his colleague, as we saw today with Daryl Issa. Now, here, here are some of the things that you never learn if you listen to Daryl Issa, whether it's in the hearing room or on Fox News, where he was tonight, insisting that they just aren't getting those uh, lowest learner emails that they need. Uh, the, um, the, the IRS has, in fact, turned over every one of the lowest learner emails uh, in this case. They have turned over 500,000 pages of documents uh, from the IRS to Congress. There are 150 people working full time at the IRS, not examining people's tax returns anymore, not trying to increase the revenue available uh, to the Treasury at the IRS, through the IRS, but 150 people working full time just to provide documents to Daryl Issa and these kinds of uh, subpoenas. You know, uh, that's true, but I think we need to back up. This is not an honest inquiry. This is a star chamber operation. This is cherry picking information, deliberately colluding with a Republican IG at the IRS to make sure that the investigation is solely about Tea Party and conservative groups, even though we know that the filth has included progressive titles uh, as well as conservative titles, and that they were equally stringent. Uh, it was a foolish thing to do, and it's wrong, but it was not just targeted at conservatives. But Daryl Issa wants to make sure that that information does not get out. And it's been a very shameful thing under the sham of an investigation when it is not an investigation. That's one of the reasons he wants to have a contempt citation against Lois Lerner, who is exercising her constitutional right to invoke the Fifth Amendment. The D.C. Bar says that if you haul somebody who's already said, I'm invoking my fifth, before a legislative body, you are, you are guilty of doing nothing but humiliation and pillaring, and that you can actually be brought up for an ethics charge in D.C. at the bar for engaging in that kind of clearly punitive behavior. The Quinn case before the Supreme Court, you mentioned the McCarthy era, going back to the McCarthy era, made it very clear that the deference is always to be given to a citizen, their absolute right under the Constitution to invoke the Fifth Amendment. Darrell Issa doesn't want her to be able to do that. He wants to bring a contempt citation before the floor of the House in order to pillory and humiliate this woman to make a case out of her because it's political. It exercises their base in an election year. Congressman Connolly, if... Uh uh, Chairman Issa ever lets you speak at a hearing again, uh, would you do us a favor and try to get a question toward him on how he would interpret the conflict between the law and the regulation where the law says exclusively, the regulation says primarily? I think those IRS workers were doing the best they possibly could with what is in effect a political uh, evaluation that they have to make on those applications. You couldn't be more right. And by the way, if I went home to my wife and I said, ours, honey, is an exclusive relationship. I love you exclusively. And that means primarily. Uh, I'd probably be sleeping on the couch for quite some time. Uh, words mean something. And your point is absolutely correct. And don't forget, why are, we, why are we fighting about these words? Because this is all about protecting the anonymity of super PACs, the Koch brothers and others who are major donors on the Republican side, and they need them, and they need their anonymity in this election cycle. Congressman Jerry Connolly, not my primary guest tonight on this subject, my exclusive guest tonight on this subject. Thank you very much for joining my us My pleasure, tonight. Lawrence. Thank you. Coming up.
The Russian government is still pretending that those are not Russian troops who have invaded Ukraine. Is that a good sign? Might that actually make it easier for the Russian troops to eventually disappear back into Russia? And another stunning moment on Russian TV today. A reporter quits live on the air because she will not push the Russian propaganda agenda. She will join me later. And in tonight's rewrite, Hillary Clinton is rewriting Hillary Clinton. Her first comments on Ukraine were not supposed to become public, but they did last night. And today, Hillary Clinton clarified those comments. That's coming up.